My name is Heather Breckel, and I'm the colorist from IDW's My Little Pony comic, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 138. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Rom. How are you doing? Slowly but surely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Surely but slowly. Still awesome, so awesome. So how have you been doing, man? Progressing, progressing. Improving my shading, improving my line art, one step at a time. Mm, and your coloring? It's okay. So could use a little bit more work. We have a person who can talk about that later on. And also joining us today is Antikola Pony. Hello. Anti Senpai, draw my OC. <laughs> I've already drawn your OC. Yay. How are you doing, man? Uh just doing some line art right now. Mm. I'm alright. Alright, awesome, awesome, awesome. And also joining us today is Lycan. G'day, everyone. Uh, you, I, I hate time zones. Why Why is it day for you? Uh, yeah, the sun's <laughs> up, it's shining, and it's a lovely day outside. Not fair, you jerk. <laughs> so how are you doing, man? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Had a late night last night, and then had a quick nap, and now I'm up at uh, 6 a.m. to do this one. Mm. Well, if people can translate the times with this one, they'll be impressed, but they're yep. not. <laughs> and also, um, our guest for this week is comic book colorist Heather Breckel. Apparently, she draws cats and colors comics. I do. <laughs> How are you doing, Heather? <laughs> oh, doing good. Just wrapping up work for the day. Just chilling. So, things are going well. Mm, that's awesome been following you on the tumblers and also on the instagram and i noticed that you like anime yeah i'm a really good big fan of anime i've watched tons and tons of it so i think i got into it when i was in fifth grade so it's probably been about 20 years hmm. i think it's a rule for asians to like anime or at least watch an anime <laughs> <laughs> But before we start, Heather, I need to ask you the two important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? Um, It's definitely Rainbow Dash, but uh, Rarity is a close second. Hmm, Rainbow Dash and Rarity as a close second. Rainbow Dash is interesting because she's the most marketable pony. <laughs> yeah, I also like that she's kind of the most blunt pony, so she always <laughs> has really funny interactions. Uh, I, I do like what Katie Cook is doing with her character in the books. She, she wrote her really well. Yeah, yeah, she does a really good job with all of them. I've really enjoyed working with her. So, your favorite episode from the show? Probably Suited for Success, because I really <laughs> relate to that one. It's always really painful for me to watch. <laughs> Apparently, all the creative types are like that. Yeah, I mean, it definitely really shows, you know, like, the professional process and stuff. So, I think most of us kind of cry a little inside when we watch that episode. <laughs> About how true it is. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like oh, I've yeah. had like a, a lot of comments early on when I was first getting into coloring. I get a lot of clients that were like Rainbow Dash. They'd be like, it just needs to be a little more cool or a little more gritty. And I'm like, I don't really know what that is. <laughs> yes, a lot of people say that, uh, oh, that's my life in a nutshell. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who works in the um, graphic design industry. He works in some kind of supermarket where he does the art for it. And when he does a pamphlet for the store, it took him about, I think, a week to do it. And when his boss looks at it, he says, do it again. I don't like it. And wow. then after three hours, the boss says, I like it. Oh, man. An artist's job is never easy. But it sure is fun. Oh, true that, true that, true that. Yeah, like a really yes. fun website is, um, I think they have like a Tumblr too, um, Clients from Hell. <laughs> and it's like, it's pretty much just all like artists that have dealt with like, ridiculous clients. They're all really hilarious. <laughs> I think I've seen that one or heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely on Tumblr. Hmm. Anyway, thank you, Heather, for answering the two important questions. And... Now let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is, well, <laughs> yes, time. A bit redundant here, I see. So, Heather, mind introducing yourself to the people who not know who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, well, I, you already said my name, Heather Breckel. I work as the colorist of the official My Little Pony comic for IDW Publishing. And I also have worked on 
the Ninja Turtles series for IDW. So um, right now I'm on the ongoing based on the Nick show. And in the past, I've also worked on Peter Panzer Faust for Image and Number 13 and Never Ending for Dark Horse. And I just actually wrapped up something with Katie Cook for Marvel. So that was tons of fun. Oh, cool. Because I'm currently looking at the website called Comic Views and I'm looking at your work. And I noticed that you don't have anything to do with Marvel. Well, now that you mentioned it's there, it's coming. So we all have to wait. Yeah, it's... I think it's coming out in November. It's for um, a Spider-Verse anthology. So mm. it's um, original character and story that Katie Cook did for it. So it's really adorable. So I can't wait for people to see it. Oh, cool. I can't wait. I can't wait too. So Heather, we all know about like IDW, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and all those comic companies. How did you get involved in the industry? Well, it all kind of started. I just sort of was doing my own thing on DeviantArt and doing coloring there, doing an, uh, doing some coloring just for fun, like for this website called Enter Void, which is a comic battling website. And I made some friends on that website and they ended up all working, like a bunch of them ended up working in the industry. So, um, I met James Stoko there who ended up working for, um, IDW and he did Godzilla Half Century War and he was like hey I need help with the colors so I got to work as a flatter there on that title and um, that was how I met my editor Bobby Kerno who's also the editor on My Little Pony and the Turtles and I also got to it kind of all branched out from there just because I had that one connection and I got a connection from also through um, Enter Void for Image, um, I got that job through um, Elusio Santos. He did something for Curtis Weed, and Curtis ended up needing a, a new colorist on Peter Panzerfaust, so that's kind of how I got started there. So it, it's mostly through connections. Everyone kind of gets in through their own way. Like, sometimes people... I've seen a lot of people are starting to get jobs through Tumblr. <laughs> wow. But yeah, like, well, I mean, editors are definitely looking, they're definitely looking online for good artists. I mean, look at Boom. Like, I think they've used a lot of indie artists from, they're big on, like, the internet for the Adventure Time comics. I haven't worked on that yet, but I've seen the internet's really become a big thing in the industry. So even if you can't, like, go to, like, San Diego Comic Con or anything, there's still always a chance to get to work on comics. Hmm, all right, all right. So... Back in the days when you want to get into the industry, you basically had to know people and go to all the conventions just to show your portfolio? Yeah, like, I mean, I never did the convention route just because I was too lazy to go to San Diego. And I mean, <laughs> at that point, it was already really hard to get into. So I never bothered with going to conventions. But I mean, for me, I got my connection. I got my work through connections. But the way I got those connections was because... I did good work and I worked hard, so my friends were able to vouch for me. So if you're interested in doing comics, and if you know someone already that's in the industry, make sure that you're working your butt off so, you know, they might want to take a chance and put in a good word for you. Uh, pro tip. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you've worked on the Ninja Turtle series as well? Yes. Wow, that's cool. And um, what what in particular got you into that one? Well, that was also my editor, Bobby Kerno. Um, well, I'd originally gotten to work with um, Marley Zircone, who was also a friend. She needed a colorist for the April O'Neil micro for the regular Turtles ongoing. And from there, I guess Bobby already knew that I was a big fan of the Turtles. So when the new Nick show started and they decided to do a comic for that, he decided to hit me up. But um, with Turtles, it was something I was already a big fan of and... My editor knew I liked it, so he kind of poked me about doing that. Are you watching the new Turtle series? I'm behind on it just because I've been so busy, but I've at least watched the first season and about first few episodes of the second season. But I've been so swamped, I'm definitely not up to date on it, okay. which sounds really bad. But No, 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 it's still okay. I can understand. So how are you liking the new Turtles? I'm really enjoying it. I've always been a huge fan. I got into it when I was a kid. Um, I was into like the old school stuff and then I got into the Archie comic and that's 
one point, I think I've read the Image comics. So I've always been kind of like a lifelong fan of the Turtles. So I've been enjoying the Nick show because they kind of take elements from the different versions of the Turtles, which is always really cool to see. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm watching it now, and my first opinion on it was, oh my god, 3D. Oh, I hope this don't suck. <laughs> Well, I think it works well for it, despite the fact that it, it has like a TV budget. Like, it's so stylized, it doesn't have that uncanny valley creepiness going on that I've seen in some shows that I've seen that are like in 3D. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I enjoyed it. I am up to date with the series. It's season three now. I kind of forget. But yeah. Yeah, I think it just started. I'm, I'm up to date now, and I am liking the direction they're taking in. So, obvious question here that is on everyone's mind. Ponies, how did you get involved with them? How did I get involved? Yeah. Um, well, I was already a fan of the show, and I was already following, like, Equestria Daily and stuff, and I saw that they had announced on Equestria Daily that the comic was coming, and since the editor that was going to be on Pony was already my editor on Turtles, I was like, hey, Bobby, can I please work on that? And at first, I think Andy was supposed to be doing his own colors, but um, I guess he just wasn't quick enough. So eventually Bobby poked me about that. He had me do like a test coloring and stuff. So that, it, was, it was not very complicated. I just asked and I got the job after I ended up doing the test page and I guess Hasbro liked it. Oh, okay. That's cool because I've met Andy Price in person when he was in Singapore for that convention he was at. Uh, Boy, I wish I can remember. But he said that Hasbro check up on your work a lot. Like, there's phases to everything. First, there's the sketch phase, and then there's the ink phase, and then there's the colors and whatnot. So I'm guessing working with Hasbro has been a joy, right? Right? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, they definitely look at all of our stuff, but, I mean, I've never really directly talked to them, but they rarely ever have anything that they want me to change. So I'm always very happy to work for them. Because, right, right. I mean, that's that's pretty rare to get a client that's so easy to work with. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Oh, yes, and you even made the uh, final scratch's eyes red rather than the magenta. So kudos to you for that <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew that was like a big fandom thing. So I thought it would be just a little fun shout out. Like, I think later appearances, I did the proper color, but... I figured I'd throw that in there for fun. Yeah. So, Andy, I think there's a question from Silver Quill, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a reference chart for coloring the characters amongst all the artists? Do you, like, share a reference? I'm pretty sure that Hasbro's given anyone that does the colors. Like, they have this thing called Pantones, which is more of like a... I guess the easier way to describe Pantones is we pretty much get, like, swatches. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, they give us, like, color swatches for each character. So all of the main characters and main villains and, like, the princesses and Kitty Mark Crusaders, I have references for those. And I think I also have, like, a big giant guide that shows, like, all the stuff for, like, merchandise and stuff. So there's, like, character references in there. So I think they kind of give us all the same references to go from i mean i know that me and andy have the same ones but i don't know about everyone but i'm pretty sure that hasbro would try and keep that consistent for all of us so i don't see why they wouldn't have it hmm. all right all right because me and my other co-host james and silver we review the comics on a weekly basis and f up till now we really enjoy the comics so kudos to you well, thank you and, but but we had an issue, like, oh, we, we had something that we really can't, like, we really need to ask someone involved. And luckily, you're here. In the Applejack Micro, Granny Smith's scarf, the apples are black, and the freckles on Applejack and Big Mac were black. Uh, is that because of the line art artist, or was it something else? Oh, that was, that's just how Brenda inked it. At the time, I didn't know that it was supposed to be color held. Like, I mean... I was on a tight deadline, so I didn't really think about it, but mm. that was, it was just, it wasn't communicated to me that it should be color held, but I think she hasn't done that again, so mm, okay. I think we all learned from that, but yeah, it wasn't supposed to be black, but 
no one ever told me to do a color hold on it, which would have made it in color. Okay, well, Hasbro checked it, so mm, they, they should keep up too, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, things will always slip by. I mean, I get a week to do colors, so if oh. there's ever a problem on my end, I chalk it up. So, well, I didn't have time. <laughs> so wait, it's you, gonna happen. you take a week to finish a whole comic or a page? Uh-huh. A whole comic? I have to... Oh. I do about three to four pages a day usually, and I get a week to do an entire issue. Oh wow! Oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, how pretty long does tight it? Deadline. Oh, um, how long does it take one comic to start and end and publish? Do you know that? I think it's about a month altogether. I think the artists usually get about three to four weeks to pencil and ink everything. So I'm at the very end. So it's Ooh, probably wow. about a month altogether. I. Don't know how far ahead the writing happens. That would be a question for Katie. But I know that the art isn't like super far ahead. We're pretty much, I think, two months ahead of the print schedule. Mm -hmm. So like stuff that I'm doing right now won't be in print until probably like January. Oh, okay. Because I keep buying the comics from Comixology and whenever it comes out, I buy it. Whenever it comes out, I buy it. And it never occurred to me that you guys do this within a week, or at least you do this in a week. So that is amazing. Oh, thank you. It's, it's actually really common for colors to have that kind of schedule. It's like I've talked to some that have to do like an issue in like a day, and <laughs> I don't know why they would do that to themselves. They probably work with very slow artists. Oh, wow. I wish I could work that fast. <laughs> like I've done it before, do. and it really sucks. <laughs> Oh, boys. I guess if you don't have experience um, working with a week-long deadline, I guess you just have to pick it up as you go along and just get faster yeah. and faster at it. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you definitely pick up, like, other little tricks to make things go by quicker. Like, I think starting out, it would, I was only able to do, like, two pages a day of Andy's. But now, if I really had to, I could probably do, like, six to eight pages of his in a day but i i choose not to do that just because i want to try and keep the quality up mm, and keep with the pacing then yeah i feel like i'd get lazy if i tried to do that many pages in a day <laughs> uh, it's understandable it's understandable like i record the comic reviews well inside the story if people want to know i record the comic reviews back to back so i do one week on and one week off at least i have time to relax Recording's easy, but the editing is hard. Like this one. Ah, time zones. I hate time zones. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about time zones, do you face that problem? Not really. I think most of the artists are on the East Coast in America. I know me, Katie, and Andy are all in the same time zone. And I think Brenda is in Canada. <laughs> and I think Tony, Heather Newford, Amy, and... Sarah Richards are in California, so we're on slightly different time zones. But I mean, I don't, I haven't really worked with many overseas artists aside from, I think, Dario on the Ninja Turtle comic is. I'm not sure. For the most part, our time zones are all pretty similar. So there's no trouble with trying to get everything on track? No, not really. Mm, all right, all right, all right. I was just wondering, right? Um, I mean, there's so many different types of art. Right. Uh, well, why, why, why did you choose coloring? It was always the process I enjoyed doing the most. I mean, I was still trained to be an illustrator. I went to college for animation, and that was actually what I planned to do. But I started when I was doing the comics for Intervoid, and I was also just doing like fan colorings of different manga I liked, like just random pages. I discovered that I just really liked doing that. So. I decided that I was going to just focus on that just because just a pain in the ass to be a penciler for a living and it's a lot harder to get work. <laughs> so figured that would be the easiest way to go. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Enter Void. Is that an original comic by you? Um, It's a comic battling website that I used to participate on. Like I still like go there just for fun, but I don't do comics for it anymore. But I just drew like a bunch of comics for a character I created and pretty much battled other artists on there and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. And you, I really learned how to like hit deadlines through it because you get like about two to four weeks to draw a full comic. Oh, wow. So it definitely makes you speedy. 
Okay, because I noticed that one of your original characters, uh, sorry if I got the name wrong, is Angela, was it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I, I'm awesome. Hey, um, uh, Angela, I noticed that you draw her. Is it her? Yeah, it's oh, her. Yeah, She's okay. very androgynous. Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not going to blame 4 a.m. time zones anymore. I noticed that you draw her a lot, and she looks pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah, she's the main character for a webcomic I'm going to be doing real soon. Right now, I'm working on the first chapter. When it gets done, I'm going to put it online and stuff. So. Oh, cool. But I've worked, she was my character on Enter Void. So I decided to branch out and use her for something else. Mm. So you write for her story? Yeah, her stuff is all written, drawn, and colored by me. So mm. I still do comics for fun, like myself but sometimes you know i have to like jump around and do something besides coloring to keep things interesting all right um ah yes the coveted first chapter (laughs) once you get that uh, sent off you'll be like oh i'm so nervous i can't believe it's getting out there like this show (laughs) (laughs) so funny that you mentioned you did all the work for that comic because i'm on another website funny enough called comic book bd uh, DB database, and it says that you you write ink, pencil, color, and letter, and cover artists for a few comics. So is it true? Yeah, like they're all just self published things that I've done. Um, I tend to sell them, like print editions of them at cons. But yeah, I I can do all of the roles if I really wanted to. But obviously, coloring is where my heart is. Mm. All right, so you need to do more than one thing. So, yeah, at least you have a variety of skills then. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea to be able to know how to do different things and work in more styles. So that way you're, like, a lot easier to hire. (laughs) Awesome, awesome, awesome. Has it been, like, a comic or a manga which has been a huge influence with you with regards to color? Oh, let me think. I mean, I've always really been into, like, stuff like Dave Stewart. He does a lot of coloring for Hellboy. He's worked with um, Sean Gordon Murphy a lot. He's probably my biggest color influence. I do look at anime a lot for coloring since I mostly do kind of a self shaded style. So I think the big, most recent influences were um, Kill la Kill, Attack on Titan, and Madoka Magica. Well, Madoka Magica. Hmm. Madoka. <laughs> Madoka. The saddest thing. <laughs> so sad. Uh, I need to watch it. Sad magical go, go girl thing. Sad. <laughs> go go watch it. Go watch it. Yeah, probably one day. It's only like twelve <laughs> or thirteen episodes, and you'll knock it out in like a few hours. Oh, also there's the movie, and also this OVA, right? Well, the movie. I mean, aside from the latest one, the movie, the first two movies are just a retelling of the series. Mm. So, like, I mean, you could safely just watch the movies and. You would pretty much get the same experience because mm-hmm. they since the series is only like 12 or 13 episodes they didn't really have to cut out that much to put it into movie form so you could just sit and watch all three movies and you'd be good all right, all right all right you know how colors they can be used to emotions moods they can bring depth and everything right so what considerations do you think about when you when you're like starting to color it really depends on what I'm looking at. Depending on if the scene is supposed to be like have a specific tone, I try to like look at the script as well as the arts to see, you know, maybe this really needs scary dramatic shading or like for the action scenes, do I want to make a particular page like panel pop? I'll like give it like a bright red background or something. So I try to just look at a page and consider, you know, do I want this to look happy? Does this need to look like a specific setting that's already been established? So I just try to like look at the overall picture and like I try to go from the script and the arts to guide me, but sometimes I also kind of just throw in my own stuff there, like if that makes sense. Mm, all right, all right. So I read a blog somewhere. I forgot the website, sorry. Uh, but from what I understand, sometimes the script writer would put notes for the colors to color the page. So is that true? It really depends on the writer. Um, Most of the time, I don't really interact with the writer that much. Um, If they really want to be hands-on, obviously, they'll come to me. But usually most of the scripts I've dealt with don't really give many notes for the colors outside of, like, it's daytime, it's nighttime. (laughs) 
So usually most of my notes will come from the artist. I think most artists have given me some notes. I think the the big annual with the power ponies, mm. I got to work with Ben Bates and he didn't really give much input on that one. So that was mostly just me doing whatever I felt like. Okay. But most most <laughs> writers don't tend to put in a lot of information for the colors. Mm, okay, because the Power Pony Annual is really awesome. I I enjoyed reading that one and just looking at certain things like the angle and the colors, it really pops out. Thank you. That was a lot yeah. of fun to work on. Like, I love doing that style. Uh, I, I wish that they do something with it because the backstory with how... Spoilers. <laughs> so we're not going to carry on. <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know, but still, it's a good read. You guys should go read it and appreciate the colors. They're so colorful. Thank you. Is there any advice you'd uh, like to give to any up-and-coming artists and or uh, colorists? Well, probably the most generic advice that I always hear that is very much true is try to draw something every day or for colorists, try coloring something every day. Try to work in different styles, like don't have one very specific style because like for me, I have like three or four different coloring styles and I've gotten tons of different jobs because of that because sometimes like someone will have like a very specific look they have in mind and they'll look at my portfolio and they'll see hey one of the styles i have will like be exactly what they want so try to keep yourself not too locked in on one specific style while you obviously want to have your very own look to your work it's like smart to be able to work in multiple ways so more companies will be interested in you Thanks for that. Uh, do you have any particular style that you enjoy coloring for? Well, I think probably my favorite is, um, well, I really like doing like the cell shaded, like I do on Pony and Ninja Turtles. I also really kind of like doing, um, it's kind of where you could, it's almost like flats, but with like really dry painterly touches. So it's kind of similar to what Dave Stewart does on Hellboy. So those are probably my two favorite. I don't get to work on the latter one a lot since most of what I do now is all ages. Mm. So if you could work on any comic right now that's out there, what would you like to work on? Probably the new Hawkeye or the new Miss Marvel. Mm. Yeah, they're both really good titles. They're definitely my favorite books out there right now. Mm, thank you for the tip. We met at Buck this year and you told me that and I really need to go find a bookstore that sells those comics <laughs> well I mean they're all on comicsology too oh. I mean I know it's not the same as owning the issue but like physically mm, true true but since it's Marvel it shouldn't be too hard to find mm, true 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 so mm, here's an interesting one for we new comic book readers out there you work in the comic industry so you got to know there's a lot of comic books out there so which one would you recommend for new readers who only touch the pony comics but are afraid to touch like Spider-Man number 500 something? So what would you recommend for them? <laughs> well, I mean, I personally wasn't into superhero books until recent years just because, like you said, it was really intimidating to get into stuff like Spider-Man because there was like 500 issues and like 10,000 different titles. I mean, if you want to like try out superheroes, I recommend Going with the new Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, uh, Ghost Rider. They're all really solid, solid titles. Batgirl's been getting really good. They recently got a new artist on that. It's been really awesome. And it's not too far along, so it's not too intimidating to get it to. And Becky Kluman, she has a new series called Gotham Academy, which has just been a joy to read. And it just started, though, with like one or two issues in. So it's not too hard. For people that are more on like the manga side, like if pe people that are really big anime fans, um, I would highly recommend um, stuff by Naoki Urasawa. Um, he did Pluto and Monster and 20th Century Boys, and all of those are none of them are too lengthy, so you're not going to be spending like a million dollars getting like 500 volumes. I think they're all like 20 volumes or lower. Oh. So I would recommend to try and focus on shorter series if you want to branch out. I think. One of my favorite really short series was Joe the Barbarian. It was done by Sean Gordon Murphy, and it is just gorgeous. And the whole series is available in trade paperback, so it's really easy to get into and get a hold of. Mm, okay, cool. Well, this good thing that this is recorded, so people could just pause and play back if they want to hear what you recommend. 
yeah, they're they're all available on Amazon, so they're pretty easy to get. Awesome. Uh, and interestingly enough that you mentioned about manga, uh, Naruto is about to end soon. And wow, that's been a ride. I know. I'm, I'm kind of sad about it because, I mean, I've definitely outgrown the series throughout the years. Like, I started reading in high school. <laughs> And I mean, I'm sad to see it go, though, but I mean, it just hasn't been as good in recent years. Aye. So, I mean, I guess it's time. Tell me about it. Oh, God. <laughs> I remember there's this time period where I couldn't get internet for almost a year. And I missed out on a year's worth of Naruto. And when I got back, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, like, the most frustrating experience reading a comic ever for me was, um, I think it was the Sasuke versus Itachi fight, because, oh. like, every other chapter was a cliffhanger, and then it would be like, haha, that didn't really happen, it was really Sharingan, or uh. Taijutsu, or whatever, and I'm like, dude, no. So that whole oh. chapter last week did not even happen. Oy. That was just the dumbest fight ever. Oh, mm, yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, no. I, I remember that fight now. Mm, yeah. Oh, that, boy. That was just dumb. Yeah, reading that, it was the going was painful. Yep, true, true. But at least now they're ending it soon. So, like, they say all good things must come to an end. Yeah, next week's the last chapter. So, oh. it'll be sad, but it's it's time. True, 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 true. I don't think One Piece is ever going to end in my oh, lifetime, God. so I've given up on that. <laughs> I, I still, keep, I still keep reading. No, okay, that's a lie. I don't read. I look at pictures, just because one. The problem with One Piece to me is that when things get really exciting, they slow it down by telling flashbacks. Yeah, it's. I mean, the flashbacks are good at least because I feel like. At least in One Piece, unlike a lot of shonen, like I think like Naruto and Bleach, you know a character's gonna die because they're getting a flashback, and I'm like, well, thanks for the for the surprise. Uh, yeah, but still, but still, oh god. Uh, at least it's not another Detective Conan story. Oh dear lord, that series is never gonna end. I know. I, I was reading it when I was in high school, and it was num book number fifty something. And I was th I was thinking like, oh god, this is going to end because Dragon Ball finished at book number forty three. Yay! <laughs> Dragon Ball feels really long until you actually look at how many volumes it really was, and it it's like nothing compared to like One Piece or oh. God forbid you get into Hajime no Ito. Oh, that well. one's like a hundred volumes now, and. It's like a lot of people keep telling me to read JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I'm like, dude, that's what I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. Uh, oh, yes, that's an in-joke with us. JoJo's not bad. JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> I, Indeed. I, as for now, I'm not reading JoJo, I'm just watching JoJo, and it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. I have a friend who's into JoJo, and oh my god. According to his words, it's something. It's a must watch. Yes, and must read. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, like I think if you're into JoJo, you're really into JoJo. It's like all my friends that are really into it are like crazy into it. <laughs> I, I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But how do I put this? When people ask me how's JoJo, I say it's good, and I'll tell them this one scene where how how can you tell if that person has a stand or not? Is when you touch your nose. And all of the stand users touch their nose except for one girl who's not a stand user. And haha, that's a lie. I found out who's the other stand user. Which is really smart, yet silly at the same time. Yeah. One thing about that show is all men have shoulder pads. Well, it's from the 80s, so I understand. 80 shoulder pads were cool back then. Yeah, but it's all men. Like, even the non-important background guy has has shoulder pads They're like hmm shoulder pads they're awesome <laughs> i know so here's a uh, tip for you guys who are going to conventions cosplaying remember shoulder pads yeah just pretend you're like an 80s businesswoman and it's uh... <laughs> really great to hear that you've been influenced by a lot of these manga and anime and cartoons and stuff did you um enjoy it while you were growing up as a kid yeah i've been a diehard just cartoon and animation and anime fan in general. So it's always been really like important to me. So what's your favorite anime throughout your lifetime? 
Well, I think the one that has stuck with me the longest was Dragon Ball because that was the one I first got into, I think, back in the day when I was in third or fourth or fifth grade, nothing like that. They used to play the original Dragon Ball, like not Dragon Ball Z, um, at like 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And for some reason, I was up and I caught it one time and <laughs> I totally fell in love with the art style. And so, it kind of like changed everything for me from there on out. Was it the ocean dub or the fun, Funimation? Was it? I don't remember. Was it the I ocean? I think it was ocean because I don't think Funimation really went after Dragon Ball until Dragon Ball Z got really popular. Mm, so yeah, the ocean dub. Because if I remember right, ocean is Canadian, right? I think so. I know like there's back then was like Bang Zoom and I think they were on the West Coast. And yeah, I think West Ocean might be Canada. Mm, so, because, well, some of the VAs that are doing Pony also did some Dragon Ball, so it's like, hmm, Vegeta is also the voice of Bok Biceps. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's Nepa. So, yeah, so that's cool. And also, who was it? Uh, that guy, Silver Shield, is also the voice of Goku. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, like, Goku and Vegeta, they're the parents to... Um two of the cutie mark crusaders <laughs> and i think um kathy she did um shampoo on run the half oh. and she's also um one of the characters in black lagoon and tabitha is roberta in black lagoon which is really really interesting to see when you see the ova for that one. Oh god like oh man grandma one half what's your opinion on that one I haven't watched it in like a million years i think i watched it back in the vhs days and I think like every weekend I would go to Hollywood Video or Blockbuster and rent like just a pile of anime and watch it throughout the weekend. And Ron the Half was one of the ones there, but I have, I've never seen the entire thing, but it was always really fun. I think it actually aged surprisingly well. Mm. I keep meaning to rewatch the new dub. Mm. I haven't watched the anime in a long time, but I remember reading the comics and the comic has a satisfying ending. While the anime didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything by Rumiko Takahashi is really bad about that. <laughs> uh, well, at least people... I recommend people reading it because it's fun all around. Like, you have boy meets girl, girl meets boy. They don't like each other. Boy can turn into girl. Hijinks ensue. It's really fun. It's, it's really not your typical anime that you can find out there. Yeah, it's definitely still really unique, even now. Is there any comic or car- anime or manga that follows that formula? Is there? Oh, uh, not offhand. I mean, God, I mean, I guess anything else by Rumiko Takahashi is about as close as you're going to get to Rama. Huh? I don't remember, but funny enough that you say hand, uh, I know this one crazy anime called Midori no Hibi. Oh, God, I remember that series. <laughs> <laughs> that was really interesting. It's fun. The anime was, I think, about 13 episodes long while the manga kept on going. And it was pretty cute. Yeah, I remember I checked it out just because the the whole story sounded hilarious because, it oh, is. his right hand turns into a woman. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> um, I was like, well, I should check that out. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. So we've been talking about anime, comics, and also manga. Um, do you play video games? Yes, I do. Oh. I mean, I'm not a hardcore gamer anymore just because I don't really have time, but oh, true. I've always been really into games. Wow. That, uh, I'm thinking about this really hard right now. And a girl who loves anime, comics, video games, and manga, where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I have, like... Almost the whole nerd spectrum, so... <laughs> which is rare, which is rare. I mean, oh god, I can't find anyone like that here. But anywho, so what, <laughs> so what are you playing right now? Right now I've been working on Fantasy Life, and I have a Wii U, so I just got Bayonetta, oh. and I've been working through the first one so that I can try the new one, so I've, I've been enjoying the hell out of that. I am so jelly because mm, I am tempt I'm almost tempted to buy a Wii U, but I don't want to I don't want to buy it just to make it my platinum machine. Well, I mean it, it's getting a lot of platinum games and I mean there's all if you have friends that play Smash, I mean obviously that's coming out and 
Um, let's see. Hyrule Warriors is insanely fun. I mean, I've never really played the, is it like Dynasty Warriors or whatever mm-hmm. is the franchise it's part of? But yeah, I really enjoyed the hell out of that. And I mean, so many good games are coming out for it. So now is definitely a good time to pick it up. Oh, cool. It, is there any upcoming game you're really looking forward to? Smash. Oh, yeah. Smash. I'm, I'm, I'm really angry at Nintendo because Smash and Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the remake, are both coming out on the same day. And I was like, really. Oh, Ooh, funny that you mentioned yeah. that. Funny that you mentioned that. I got to play the demo for Sapphire and Ruby. How is it? I got a code for it, and I, I'm, I'm kind of like, oh, I'll just wait. It's not bad. Oh, you should activate the code because if you do, you get a free Pokemon that you can transfer to the uh, full game. Oh, sweet! Yeah, we'll see that then. Because I have Club Nintendo, so I definitely got one. I've just been lazy about putting the code in. About putting it in. Yeah, and then waiting for the download, which is really slow. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo, you. Well, I was about to say get your internet good, but they did in the new 3DS. I love Nintendo. It's like, I'm not a total fanboy, but they really aren't that good at online features, usually. Mm, true, but the recent console, the new Wii U, is getting better. The download speed is really fast. Yeah, and I've been playing Mario Kart 8 with my friends, and I, we don't really have many disconnect so it's been really strong so far mm, cool cool oh i loved my way when i had it <laughs> we oh man <laughs> my Wii's getting dusty now i'm really thinking should i buy a wii u because oh, i want to play bayonetta bayonetta so good well i you mean i don't race. know how it is where you're at but um here like N- nintendo's selling refurbished models so i think it's like 200 to get a refurb and it's pretty much just like brand new Hmm. Well, we don't have that, so we have to buy in brand new. But it's about what uh, under three hundred or something like that. So it's not that bad. It's still new. Yeah, it's the cheaper of the new consoles. So well, technically, I have a PS4. I didn't pay for that one. I got it in a lucky draw. <laughs> <laughs> so yay! But the sad thing is, I don't play anything much on it because I'm so busy doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I've never. I haven't gotten, like, the PlayStation or the Xbox One just because my computer can play all those games. So oh, that's why I have a Wii U, because my computer won't play those. <laughs> true that, true that. And it's Nintendo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nobody wants to build games for the Nintendo. Look at Mass Effect. Yeah, I'm really mad about that. But, I mean, I understand. Like, I feel like it's probably going to get better since games are actually now coming out for it. Mm-hmm. So maybe just maybe companies will turn around. True, true. Nintendo's always been the family console that you can get everyone <laughs> together and play together, whereas I think the traditional Xbox and Sony PlayStation has been more the hardcore gamers. Yeah, I don't really have time for hardcore games anymore. Like Back in the day, I was a hardcore raider on World of Warcraft, and I was like, uh, I can't let uh, any game in my life anymore. Uh, I'm just guessing right now, since we're all with the console talks, the PC gamer who are listening to this podcast, I says, uh, PC Master Race! PC Master Race! PC Master Race! <laughs> you guys. Hey, old gamer. <laughs> well, my system's definitely built for hardcore gaming, so, I mean, I definitely am very much a PC gamer, but when it comes to consoles, I only get Nintendo. Yeah, cool, cool. Got to respect that. Got to respect that. I love I love games in general, so I buy everything <laughs> if I could, oh. except for the Xbox One. No, just no. <laughs> the Xbox. I don't think there's anything I want on that. Killer Instinct. <laughs> just looking at KI is so much fun. So, wow, we sidetrack a lot in this one. It's just fun to talk. <laughs> Uh, sorry that we're not concentrating on ponies, but sometimes yeah, sometimes get tired when we talk about ponies. So it's fun to talk something else. Isn't that true? Indeed. Like, I mean, I guess I there's only so much you can cover. So we've met at Buck, and that's an awesome experience for me. I'm not sure for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've never been overseas before, so it was definitely really cool to get to experience another culture. So how was it traveling to, what was it, Manchester for you? Well, it was a very long flight. <laughs> yep, yep. I think it was like eight uh-huh. hours. Oh, eight hours I mean, for you. Yeah, it was kind of painful, but I mean, 
I slept most of the time, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, if you think that was a long flight, you should try coming to Australia. Visit us down oh. here. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, Australia scares me. You guys have all those scary animals and bugs <laughs> that are like dinosaurs. Australia. How do you survive like it? Yeah, Australia <laughs> is the dead. Uh, what was it? Give me a second. What was that game called? Demon Souls. Dark Souls. Demon yeah. Souls in hard mode. Yep. Yeah. Or the Dark Souls two in hard mode. Yep. <laughs> Everything wants to kill you, but still, I've been there once and I'm still alive. Except I lost a finger. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sure stuff doesn't try to kill you the second you walk into the country. Oh no, they just take away your dairy products. That's all. That sounds like an anime. Just walk in and suddenly everything attacks you. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. So you had fun at Bark. What other conventions have you been to? I Did you go to TrotCon, was it? Yeah, yeah, I go to TrotCon every year just because it's in the same city as me. So I think this year it's even going to be closer to me. It's like five minutes from my place. So I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll, I can walk there if I wanted to. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, if I remember right, you were announced for a convention recently, right? Uh, which one? I don't know what ones I'm allowed to say yet. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> uh. I, I do have some coming. Okay. I, see. You know what? I'm just going to cut that one out because I got no idea because I should have done my research, silly boy. <laughs> Last year, I, well, this year I did. Um, The big ones were like BazCon. Buck and BronyCon, mm. but they I don't have any details on those for next year yet, so... Oh, well, Buck says that they're not doing any more, so that's sad. Uh, my first uh, time over the country. Mm-hmm. Well, technically my first time in Europe, so that was fun. That was my, my first convention ever. Yep, yep. Oh. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem like the countries are really set up for doing cons, which really sucks. Yeah, but still, but still, it's a fun experience. Like, um, I'm not sure how it is on your end because from my point of view, I was there as an attendee, like a normal one, and I got to see my friends being horse famous and whatnot, and I also got to see the VIP guests, and I got to talk to GM Barrow, you, and also Dave Polsky, and it was fun. Yeah, I had a bunch of fun. It's always fun to, like, talk to the fans and stuff. So earlier you mentioned that you visit EQD and you said you were a fan. So what made you become a fan of the show? Oh, if I remember right, I think I had seen the the art for it on that infamous. Like I follow Cartoon Blue, so uh. I heard about the show from that really terrible article about Pony. And I was like, what friendship is now, Jake? That sounds stupid. I'm going to check this out. <laughs> and I ended up really liking it. So let me guess, you were one of those guys who were like, I'm going to give this show, I'm just going to watch this show for one episode and I'm going to see it. And crap, it's a cliffhanger. I'm going to watch episode two. Oh, it's good, but it's a two-parter. So let's see the next episode. Mm, this is too... No, let's watch the next one. Oh, let's watch the next one. And then kids. Oh, this is going to be a bad one because the CMCs are kids. Mm, they're good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pretty much and the cycle continues. by like the third episode. Uh, what killed me on the third episode was the Benny Hill um, music that they use. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that was good. Like, oh my god, this is so good. No, I can't believe it. No! But technically I'm doing this, so that means I enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first episode you ever watched? I started watching it from the beginning. I mean, I didn't start watching it the second it aired or anything, but I started from episode one and onward. So I kind of stuck with it because the first two episodes made me think of Sailor Moon. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is like something I'd be into. Uh, Sailor Moon. <laughs> the new remake is out, and I don't know what to think about that one. <laughs> it's really hit or miss. The Sailor Jupiter, Jupiter episode was really awesome, but I didn't really care about Tuxedo Mask. I was like, uh. Uh, no one cares about you. Yeah. Yes, I saw that page spoiler you had with the uh, Sailor Discord. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a two-on-one. That one was awesome. Awesome coloring. And, uh, Thank you. I was so magical. excited when I saw that reference because Brenda Hickey, Hickey, she's also like a really big anime fan. So every time she like throws in anime references, I get really excited. Like. Oh, the new one I just did with her, um, it's not out yet, but there's a Kill a Kill reference. I was like, yes! If I remember right, you did mention that on the Tumblr, right? 
Yeah. Mm, cool. Is on the main comic or is it in the? Mm, it's friends oh, forever. Yeah, okay. I I was going to say it's micro the... because we're reviewing that right now, and micro ended. Mm. Yeah, it's um Twilight and Pinky. Twilight and Pinky. Those two are those two are strange combo. Strange combos are good. Strange combos are good. <laughs> Pinky. Yeah, well, I'm 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 really excited whenever I see the crazier combos like. Oh, there's a really crazy one I just saw. I think, um, is it Rarity and Babs? Oh, yeah, Rarity and, yeah, Rarity and Babs Seeds. I wonder what they're going to, okay, no spoilers. Oh, no, I, I'm not on that issue, so I'm, I'm as curious as you are. Okay, because we all know Rarity, how Rarity is, and we all know how Babs is. The only time they interact was in the book number 2122, the Trixie stole a diamond gem kind of story. And that's the only one we yeah. see them interact with. So it's going to be interesting. Can't wait. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right. It's like I, I'm excited we're starting to get into the more crackpot pair, pairings and stuff. So <laughs> those will be tons of fun. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you can answer this one or not, but how long do you think that the Friends Forever is going to go on? Because with the micro series, it went till 10. But with the Friends Forever, is it going to be until they don't have any more combos? <laughs> I don't have any concrete information on that, but I'm assuming as long as it keeps selling, because technically there's un- pretty much an unlimited number of combos we could do. So as long as people are still buying it, I don't see it ending. Mm, okay, because I'm going to keep buying if they keep producing it, because I like reading it and I want to read more. <laughs> I want to see what <laughs> I want to see what you guys could come up with. Like the first one was. Pinkie Pie and Applejack, that was pretty normal. But the CMCs and Discord? What? <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty crazy. I was glad that we kind of got to continue on that with um, issue 24, I think it was. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. That was with uh, Fluttershy, Discord, and the CMCs. Pretty awesome. I do love yeah. the Doctor Who reference in that one. <laughs> yeah, that was great. It was much smaller in the inside. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know what I mean, go read the comic, guys. It's really good. So I think we are at our limit with questions unless we can think of anything else. This is probably more a technical thing. When you're doing your coloring, are there any um, techniques or tools that you would uh, advise others that want to get into coloring? Well, the, the main thing that I use to do all my work is I use a Wacom Intuos 4 tablet. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't have a tablet already... Um, they recently got rid of their regular Intuos line, I think. No, wait, there's Intuos, which replaced the bamboo. So if you're looking for something cheaper now, like pick up one of the regular Intuos tablets. If you want something that's the equivalent of what I have, um, now that's changed from being Intuos to Intuos Pro, which is really confusing. But you don't have to have a really fancy, expensive tablet. You just need the basics to be able to do what I do. Like, I see, like, a lot of people starting out there, like, oh, I need a Cintiq, and I don't even have a Cintiq. <laughs> but, um, to, to do the actual coloring, I do everything in Photoshop CS3, which the, the, the version it is doesn't really matter. So, um, it's really easy to get Photoshop now the legal way, since they're doing the Creative Cloud now, and that's a subscription-based model, so now you can get Photoshop for, like, $20 a month, and I think it's even cheaper if you're a student. Hmm, all right. Technically, I don't really like that kind of method, like the subscription, because I'm the type of guy who, well, draws every now and then. So I like to own it, like the full version. Yeah. I mean, there is the downside that I really wish that you stopped getting charged once you reach what the program would actually cost. Since God knows how much it'll end up costing throughout the mm, years. But, true that, true that. I mean, when... I guess it's easier and less intimidating to see, oh, I can spend $20 a month instead of, oh, God, I had to spend $600 on this program, and that's why everyone pirates Oh, yeah, true. That. I mean, we're not advocating piracy, but it's a sad fact that people pirate programs just because they can afford it. Yeah. I unfortunately don't know many people that have a legal version of Photoshop. Like, I have the Creative Cloud, which is 
completely illegal. So I was like, yay, I don't have to be a filthy pirate. <laughs> uh, oh, I love how they go into the subscription model now because it makes them much more affordable for a lot of people. Yeah, but at, the same, yeah. but at the same time, you have to think about how often do you draw and how often are you using it? Because like, like for me, example, I only draw like every blue moon. So for me to have a subscription, it's probably the best thing, yet it's not the optimal thing if you want to do it for the next month or if I don't use it this month and I have to use it on the next month. It depends. It depends. For people that are only drawing, I recommend picking up Manga Studio. Mm. That you can get really cheap on Amazon now. I think like Manga Studio 5, just the regular Manga Studio 5 is like 20 or $30 for the full program. And it's pretty much industry standard now for people that draw, draw digitally. Like even people like Todd McFarlane, they draw using that program. It's very powerful and it's very cheap. So if you don't want to like plop down money on Photoshop, which honestly Photoshop is kind of that's not a word to draw in. It's like I only use it for coloring. But for people that are wanting to do line art and stuff, definitely pick up the Manga Studio. There's no reason to not have it if you're a digital artist because it's just so cheap. Mm, okay, Manga Studio. Um, I'll keep an eye out for that because I've heard of the tool but i never seen it in person i'm thinking of trying it out yeah because i've been lining on photoshop for a while now and it's just always a pain but your work is so and... awesome no you'll get really crisp lines if you use manga studio and it also has perspective tools so if you're not very good at perspective it has like this way to set like your vanishing points and your horizon line and stuff so Big things a lot easier, and it's really easy to bust out like the perspective grid in the program. Hmm, all right, good tip. So people out there who wants to draw and haven't touched Photoshop yet, try Manga Studio. Maybe you'll like it. Yeah, supposedly the coloring has gotten really good in the most recent version, which is I think five EX. I personally haven't used it yet, but a lot of my friends are swearing by it now. So <laughs> if you don't want to pop down on Photoshop, Manga Studio is good for. How long if you pick up the newest version? But the newest version is also a lot more expensive. Oh, true that. Oh, well, if you have the cash for Photoshop, you have the cash for Manga Studio. <laughs> yeah, and Manga Studio is like several hundred dollars too. True, 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 true. Yeah. So I'm guessing everyone else doesn't have any questions. So I'm going to have my last question here. I have a friend. She says that she doesn't want to watch Kill a Kill because it sucks. So... Could you persuade her by saying why <laughs> Killer Kill is awesome? Well, is she into Gurren Logan or anything by the people that did like Gurren Logan, Panty and Stocking, Fully Cooly? If she likes any of those people, she said she likes Fully Cooly. So I got no idea why she won't watch Killer Kill. Yeah, because if you like Fully Cooly, you would definitely like Killer Kill because there's it's like. They're pretty much the same style of show, except for obviously Kill a Kill is pretty much ben. Magical Girl, Gurren Logan or Toy Toy. It's like very high action, rapid craziness. And I, I can see like a lot of people are turned off by the skimpy outfits, but if you can look past that, I mean, it's not a, it's not really a big deal and it ends up being important to the plot anyways. So it, look past the skimpy outfits and it's a great show. Mm -hmm. I can't believe the twist. It's twist after twist after twist. I'm not someone who could learn a oh, few yeah. things from that. <laughs> yeah, like, I can see how the show wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. It's like, I love the rapid action, crazy in your face style of the show. So it's definitely the kind of show that I would enjoy. But some of my friends that tried it out were like, they weren't really big into that kind of style. Like, and login and such so i mean it's not for everyone but i definitely think that everyone should give it a chance mm, that's true that's true don't knock it till you try it so anywho that was guest time with heather Breckel, colorist for the my little pony comic and thank you for answering all our questions heather yeah you're welcome so we're gonna move on to the next topic which is news time uh, do you think you can join us Awesome, awesome. So, let's move on to the next topic. Roms, your time. Awesome sauce. Do, 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 do. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Romy Wald with the MBS Show News Time. And in today's news time, Lena Hall voiced Cameo in Season 5 and Amy Catherine Rogers wrote her episode. A while back, Tony Award winner Lena Hall used the phrase French Fizz Magic in her acceptance speech. 
In a recent Twitter post by Lena herself, she stated that she recorded an episode for season five. Also, Amy Catherine Rogers stated on her Twitter that she was the writer for Lena Hall's episode. Links can be found in the show notes below. So, who would have seen this coming? You know, I did. Really, you know. It was obvious. Yeah, you know. Yes. Oh, when she came up and it's like, yay, friendship is magic. It's like, yeah, nice shout out there. And then she manages to get on the show. Uh, okay. I mean, <laughs> to me, it was like, huh, all right. Tony Award winner, Lena Hall, doing friendship is magic. Is this going to be the new Simpsons now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if they're fans of the show, I don't see why they wouldn't hop in on the show. True that, true that. I mean, it's kind of cool if you think about it, where the first celebrity was John Delancey. They got him on. And then next up was Weird Al. And then we got Lena Hall. Now that the trifecta of popular people is there. I think um, I think everyone's famous in their own right, though. I mean... If you think about it, Tara Strong and Andrea Libman, they're all pretty well known for being voice actors oh, true. as true well. True that, true that. But they're kind of working on the show while Lena Hall and John Delancey and even Weirel are just there on call or cameos. Yeah, or I guess. Some. So you mean these guests? Guest, uh, these guests? Yeah, guests. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the possibility of Tom Cruise being on is high if he's a fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Lena Hall was like, um, can, can I maybe have a voice part? Or if the show was like, hey, nice shout out. Thanks for that. Uh, would you like to voice on the show? I wonder which one was true. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't put this in the show notes, but recently, uh, Alyssa Milano, um, she dressed up as Rainbow Dash for her Halloween costume. And the chances of her being on are high now. So, Miley Cyrus <laughs> also dressed up as a pony. No, 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 no. no. Um, that's just her, and that's not really specific, but this one. If you look at the picture, that's really specific. I think she used to do TV and stuff, and we don't see why she wouldn't. No, true. I mean, now we need to see if... Oh, boy. A while back, I said that I can't wait to see where Elle on the show, and on season four, we got him. Now... Where's my money going to be put at? Who's the another celebrity that's going to be on? <laughs> I'm betting on Ron, uh, the actor of Ronald Weasley. <laughs> he was wearing a brony t-shirt, wasn't he? At some True. point, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he he was. Was. not yeah. sure if he's a brony or just in the hatting t-shirts, but still. All right. Oh yeah, and Hoder from Game of Thrones is totally brony. Yep, yep. Wow. Or yep. that. Or yep. that. Oh, keep new. Yep. Oh. Or they'd probably just get Gabe Newell on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just imagine his cameo is going to say, like, hey, you know that... Worth the wait. No, 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 no it's going to be this. Hey, you know that game you have on Steam and you saw on Wii Wish this? It's 90% off. <laughs> <laughs> Out of yeah, nowhere. Man. But anywho, that was pretty interesting. I can't wait to see who's the next celebrity is going to be on. Anywho, Rom? In other news, Big Jim says Season 5 is not late or behind. Recently, a lot of fans have been asking where is Season 5, and to answer their question is Big Jim Miller, the co-director for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. He recently posted a tweet saying that Hasbro will announce the start date when they are ready, not before. And we are not late or behind. We are exactly where we are supposed to be. So to you guys who are waiting, keep this in mind. Season 5 is never late, nor is it early. It arrives precisely when it means to. Things can be found in the show notes below. Yay! Who knew that season five wizard. is like a wizard? <laughs> Did you just do a the Hobbit reference? Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Yes, it, it is a Lord of the Rings re- <laughs> reference. It's when uh, Gandalf is like, "Oh, a wizard is never late or early." There, exactly when they okay. um, they turn up, exactly when they want. It yeah, was still, but still, it's people have been wondering because if. People have been looking at the release date for season 2, 3, and 4. It's around this time that it's coming out. So people are just clamoring for an episode. Like recently, Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks came out. Now people are just wondering, when is the new season 5 coming out? When is the new season 5 coming out? I can't wait. I need my fix of ponies. There's always the comic, guys. Don't rush perfection. Yeah, true that. But still, um, I can't wait that animatic from San Diego Comic Con was pretty awesome so yeah cool 
Yeah, I think it's a common theme with all TV shows, though. As soon as the season's over, it's like, when's the next one? When's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think this is anything new. Yeah, well, it's a I common mean, thing. you can also be really lucky. Like, if you're a Legend of Korra fan, like, season four oh. happened, like, a month after season three. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. But uh, Korra, ooh, Korra had rough start with season three, right? Yeah, they didn't really advertise it. It's like no, I mean, I knew it was on, but none of my friends that were Korra fans had any idea it was airing, and it got really bad ratings. So they were just like, "Oh, we'll be online only." No, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Everyone's oh, watching I love it. Korra. Ooh. I need to watch the new one. Oh yeah, it's out. It's fun. Anywho, um, Heather, since you're talking about Korra, have you played the Korra game on all the systems? I played a little of the one for PC. I got the 3DS one. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it was pretty neat on the PC. The only complaint I had was the control scheme is like Bayonetta, but it's not as smooth. Like the camera is kind of shitty, but I like the action and it's pretty fun so far. Mm, from what I understand, Platinum. It's just like, if I remember right, they had an interview with uh, Activision they were given a list of developers to make the game. And one of the producers says, wait, is this real? Platinum, we can get them? <laughs> okay, we get Platinum. Forget the rest, man. Yeah, like, I mean, it's obviously not as good as their other games. But I mean, it's pretty fun. So if you're a fan of the show, you should definitely try it out. Mm. True, true. From what I understand, the game gets really exciting once you have all the powers unlocked. Yeah, and I mean, it's $15, so you can't go wrong. Mm. Oh, true that, true that. Oh, well, Season 5 is coming out soon, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yep. And um, Rainbow Rocks provided a lot of content and a lot of throwbacks mm. to the show as well. Oh, true that, true that. I think my favorite part of this uh, Rainbow Rocks was when... Um... Oh, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, was <laughs> when Maud shows up with Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love that. Oh, that was close. Well, anywho, let's end news time and talk about that one now. <laughs> I've been Romeo with the NBA Show News. Back to you, Norman. Yay. So, people want to talk about Rainbow Rocks. So, Heather, have you watched Rainbow Rocks? Yeah, I got to see it in theaters. Oh, man, I'm so jelly of you. I got to see it in theaters, too, but from a cam rip. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to buy the DVD when it's, when, once it's out. But, yeah. yeah. Well, it might not be oh, out cool. for you, but it's... Yeah, yeah, that's true. Believe it or not, it, there's always it doesn't come out in cinemas in Australia until December twenty sixth. What? Why? Why after Christmas? I I have no idea. But also, that's the exact same date as the Hobbit, so it's <laughs> it's obviously not going to be on the top of everyone's to watch list. Well, you can always have a double feature: buy tickets for the Hobbit and buy tickets for Rainbow Rocks. Yay! Yeah. Hey, what do you think about Rainbow Rocks? What's your opinion on it? I really enjoyed it a lot more than the first one. I mean, I mm-hmm. I thought the first one was fun, but the second one really, since we didn't have to deal with all the introductions and stuff and got kind of into the meat of the story right away, and they actually did a lot more with Sunset Shimmer, I really liked what they did, and I thought that they really bumped up the quality on the, anima- on the animation, and I was glad that they focused on the music, since that's always been one of the show's big strengths. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I like it. I like Rainbow Rocks because it's much more entertaining than the first one. Not saying that the first one was not, but I like what they took out of the first one and bump it like 10% or even 20% in the second one. Because like, who knew that Sunset Shimmer would be so moe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a lot more interesting as a good guy, I think. Oh, yeah. The Hero Redeem story is pretty interesting with her. Usually, if this was an anime, the hero would be brooding and says, leave me alone, I don't need your help, I can be good on my own. But this one is pretty interesting with what they did. Yeah, and I yeah. like that she kind of laugh at herself about what happened with the first one. I'm like, she didn't like go all Vegeta on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I understand that. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, I'm glad that they didn't have to deal with the whole awkwardness thing that they had to deal with in the first movie. It's like, oh, we can just skip all that and go straight to the, the meaty part of the story, as you said, and get straight into it. Since everyone watched it, right, and since, Heather, you know a bit of Jojo, did you notice some kind of quote-unquote Jojo reference with the Dazzlers when they pull up their stands? No, I didn't. 
Oh, it's in the scene where they were fighting with their um, avatars, their ghost hosters or something like that. I'm sure there's a lot of throwbacks in the Rainbow Rocks that I probably didn't get. Oh, it could be me because I... Like Heather said, when you're in JoJo, you're into JoJo. <laughs> but still, Rainbow Rocks was enjoyable. I, I say go watch it if you can. When the soundtrack got released, I, I instantly bought it. Uh, oh, that soundtrack was good. It was so good. <laughs> I still can't stop listening to it. <laughs> Even oh, now. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. It's a good it's a good soundtrack. Like Heather said they concentrated on the music which they should have been doing since on the first one. Ah, uh, Daniel Ingram does a great job, doesn't he? He is a genius. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh I think that's about it, right guys? Yeah. Yeah. No, no more Rainbow Rock talks. No no more spoilers. I think we kept the spoilers to a minimum anyway. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. So with that awkward silence, I'm going to take it as a yes. <laughs> awkward silence for the win. So let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is shout-outs. My first shout-out goes to you, Heather. Thank you for coming on and thank you for being an amazing guest. Thank you. And also to you guys, Rom, Lycan, and T. Thank you for being here, backing me up at time zones unknown. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Heather, do you have any plugs? I guess if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my DeviantArt or my Tumblr. My DeviantArt is anginess.deviantart.com, which is A-N-G-I-E-N-E-S-S. And my Tumblr is hbreckle, so just H in the, obviously my last name, B-R-E-C-K-E-L. Awesome. I'll put that in the show notes, just for people who are too lazy to type it in. I know there's people like that, so one click away from the interwebs. And follow. Yep. yep, follow. Whoa, yay. Cool. So, Rom, shout outs. Hi, Mom. Really? <laughs> really? Always. Right. Anyone else? I love else? my mom. Okay, <laughs> hi, I'm Dad. Sure love mom. <laughs> hi, Grandma. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. I have to write something new then. Okay. Uh, Henty, what about you? Shout outs to you. Don't know why you brought me in here in the first place, but yes. Anti, because you're the host famous oh, artist uh, who yeah. drew Sunshine and Moonbeam. Oh. They're so cute. Oh. <laughs> Heather, you got to see his work. And you've sketched that oh, you've what? just done of this of today's show. It's fantastic. Oh, I've just, I've just colored it. I've just colored oh, it. Oh, you just colored it. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, dear. Oh, you. Uh, but anyway, Lycan, what about you? Ah, uh, yes. You can follow me on Twitter. Very Lycan. Um, that's oh. probably the main place to contact me if you'd like. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, well, <clears throat> give me a second because I have something evil to do. Yay, Heather, there you go. Take a look, see. There's his Tumblr. Uh. Yeah, I just followed him on TV now. Ooh, yes. yo, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. If you would like to email us personally, well, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. Um, the show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sweetie Bot will tweet about stuff relating to the show. And apparently she's going a bit giddy because Heather Breckles on the show. Yay. Yay. So you can also reach me at Roman Sanzo. I tweet about Magic the Gathering and food. Recently, those are the two popular things I've been doing. Heather, do you play Magic the Gathering? I don't, but I have tons of friends with you. Uh, 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 it's an addiction I need to kick. But anywho, um, Rom, where can I find you? You can find me at reliciousgalley.tumblr.com or my deviant, reliciousdeviantr.com. I draw everything. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. And Anti? Oh, you can find me at uh, antiquilarpony.deviantr.com. And I also run Tumblr blog, uh, ask sunshine and moonbeams.tumblr.com. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And like you just mentioned yours just now, right? Oh yes, you can find me on Twitter at Barry Lycan, and I completely mixed up the shout-outs and the plugs, so yay for me. Yay! Anywho, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyVilleLife.com. Links will be provided in show notes. So, I am Norman Sanzo. I am Romeo Old. I am Lycan. <laughs> I am Inticular Pony. I am Pat Speckle. And we'll see you in the next issue of the MBS show. <laughs> bye bye, guys. Bye. bye. Later. She's giving orders and she'll never take none. 
She looks so serious, but she's still having fun. She wins them all, she's on top of the game. Competitors disappear, no one remains. She'll leave you crying in a trail of smoke. She'll leave them laughing, you're the butt of a joke. But don't be angry when she steals first place. You should have known better than. Feel you.